All children of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Quayne. I will bless the Lord at all times, and uh, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I mean just that. <laughs> Not just quoting a scripture. Just mean what I say. Hallelujah. Oh, we give God praise, and we give Him glory. This is indeed the day the Lord has made. And uh, we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for another day that you have given unto us. This is the day, Lord, you have made. And according to your word, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are going to do just that because we know that we have our liberty through the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and that we are no longer under the old law, which caused us not to relieve however, the liberty that we are experiencing today. But we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful that you, God, so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Today we are celebrating the finished work of Jesus for which we have our liberty. And so, Lord, receive all the glory, receive all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Forger, Forger, God bless you for good morning to you for coming on this platform. Good bl God bless you and good morning. Amen and amen and amen. We've been talking about the dispensation, the current dispensation for which many of us are not really having the understand, the full understanding of the grace that God has given based on the fact that Jesus had to come and um, complete that which we were not able to do and bring us to this place of liberty. All right. And so we've been discussing this and talking about the fact that um, in that old dispensation, in that old dispensation, the old covenant, in the old law, um, you are blessed when you obey, and you are cursed when you disobey. Now, in this new dispensation, um, we are blessed because God has forgiven us through the blood of Jesus. So it's no longer our works that justifies us but the blood of Jesus and so the important thing here beloved is for you to understand that you've been purchased or bought by a price and therefore you have that understanding and that will help you by activating your faith to receive it and then enjoy this dispensation of grace that we are living in now because what you don't understand you can't enjoy it and what you don't understand cannot bless you and so I've been taking my time to teach on this subject that many are ignorant about it and for that reason we are living a life of struggle because anything that you don't understand, you will have some challenges with it. And um, with this understanding, we therefore now relax 
our lives in the Holy Ghost and allow the Holy Spirit who is with us to help us, teach us, direct us, and lead us into the truth that which God has put in place. In that old dispensation, um, it's about do, do, do. <laughs> it's about what you do. In that old law, it's about what you do. In this new dispensation, it's about done, done, done. What Jesus has done for you. You see the difference? And so, it's very important for you to understand. Because, beloved, something I want to talk to you about today is that the, the, the old law and this new dispensation of grace cannot coexist. Let me repeat myself. That old law, okay, that old dispensation and of the law and this dispensation of grace cannot coexist. Why do I say that? And we're going to be looking at some scriptures here. Because somebody has done with that old law and given you or brought you into a new dispensation but your understanding of this new dispensation is as a result of knowing that this personality this person has done with the old law and has brought you into the new I, I hope you understand where I'm coming from so I want you I want to repeat myself again the old law or that old dispensation and this new dispensation of grace the law and the grace cannot coexist so i keep saying this don't live your life in the now as though you are you are in the old don't live your life in the now as though you are in the old because you will not enjoy the benefit of the now i hope i'm making myself clear you will not and cannot enjoy the benefit of the now because the benefit of the now is your understanding that the holy spirit the holy spirit is now your teacher listen anything that you give your attention to become you become a slave to that anything that you give your attention to anything that you pay so much attention to you become a slave to that so the Holy Spirit, who was not with them in the old, is with us now in this dispensation. So therefore, he is our teacher. He is our paraclete. He is our master. He is our director. He is all in all. So therefore, who do you subject to? The old law or the Holy Spirit? And so if you don't understand this, beloved, you cannot you cannot anyway enjoy the current dispensation of grace you cannot and you can enjoy because if the holy spirit is is telling you to go this direction because you you have not been been freed with your understanding that you are you are free from that old law you was you you know you you be, you you will be struggling to even hear when the holy spirit is talking to you Stephen, God bless you for come on in. Hey, Barbara, it is well with you. I salute all of you in Jesus' name. Woman of God, God bless you. All right? And so I want you to understand this. And I'm taking my time to teach you so that, beloved, we can come into the full understanding of the dispensation of grace. Listen, in the in the old law, it is not by the active. It's not by activating your faith. It's about your works. It's about your works. So, if 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 I if I'm going to take you to some scriptures right now for you to see where I'm coming from, it's about your obedience to what the law says. 
Now, not to say that you need you you need not to live or to obey the commandment of God. However, however, because of your inability to keep it, because of its stringence, Christ came. Okay, God. First of all, I want you to understand that God created His world, and He loved it. And then he created you and me, man, to have fellowship with. But the, 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 uh, the, the, there's an agreement, there was an agreement between God and man. God kept his part of the agreement. Man could not. Man could not. So therefore, in order God not to, um, you know, uh, Pull away from man that he created in his own image and likeness. He had another way to bring man close or back to the table. And that is by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come in the form of man because the only entry point, legal entry point to this earth is through a womb of a woman. And so that is why Jesus has, has to be born through the womb of a woman to come into the likeness of man. However, he was still God. Because with that law, it, it, it took, it, can, it, it only took the, 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 the divine personality of Jesus to complete it and so Matthew 5 17 Jesus says I didn't come to to break away that law or to destroy it I came to fulfill it because you couldn't do it so I came to fulfill it and then bring you into this dispensation of God's grace are you listening you see the difference now he has to come and then lead you share his blood to purchase you and I back into the table and now the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our director of how we live our lives. Are you getting it? And so, don't live your life as though you are in the old dispensation because beloved, the law and grace cannot and could not coexist. It will not work. No. It cannot work. No. Are you listening to me? Like I said, in the in the old law, it's about what you 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 do for God to do what he has to do. It's about what you do for God to do what he has to do. In this in this dispensation, it's about what Jesus has done for you for you to, all you have to do is receive it, accept it, believe it, and that's it. Yes, that's it. And then allow the Holy Spirit to walk with you. Yes. It's not, a, it's no longer your works. That will justify you. If anything, it's your faith. That is why I bring you faith moment. This and every morning for you to tune in, beloved, I'm telling you, it takes your faith. God is interested in seeing your faith in that which he sent his son to do. That's it. Yes. All right. And so again, the law and grace cannot, could not coexist. So you have to make a choice. Now, maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you didn't know it. So that is why I'm bringing you this message so that you can announce, get a, a clear picture and then make a decision. Because the decision is on you. Whether to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior or not. You will never be forced. Are you listening? But it will be the best decision you have ever made in your life. Based on the fact that we are not any longer living 
under the old law by the dispensation of grace. Now look with me, look with me, um, Exodus chapter 20. Okay, um, put your finger there for, 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 for a minute. Put your finger there for a minute. And uh, go with me to De uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. I want to show you something that will come to us. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy 11. All right. Deuteronomy 11. Let me show you something here. Deuteronomy 11. And please do me a favor, every one of you, do me a favor. Please share this broadcast. For, cool, for crawl, for crawl, for crawl. God bless you. Hi, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Do me a favor. Please share this broadcast to your friends, loved ones, so that they can also be part of this. All right. Um, verse 26. Let's look at verse 26. Verse 26. Behold, I said before you a blessing and a curse. See, we're talking about. That is of the old law, the old dispensation, the law. All right, let me get this glasses here. It says, Behold, I said before you a blessing and a curse. Verse 27, The blessing, if you obey the commandment of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandment of the Lord your God. But turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. Now, this is this is Moses talking again to the children of Israel concerning the law. Concerning the law. All right? Concerning the law that if you obey the law, you will be blessed. If you do not obey, curse is your portion. Curse. Now, just imagine that, you know, somehow, somewhere, yesterday, some of, you know, we, we spoke about even your ignorance, something that you, you, you don't even intend, you didn't intend to do. However, you did. You had to pay a price for it. I mean, you, you can say that, it, it, it was not your 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 intention, unintentional sins. Yet you have to pay price for that. And so just imagine, just imagine that you know, um, if you if you obey. And beloved, again, let me repeat this: that nobody could obey the whole law. Nobody. Remember, you are living with other human beings that are not complete they are not wholesome they are being so every day we are all learning something every day we are we are increasing or we are growing and all that and it comes with all manner of issues all manner of issues everybody have an issue and so if you are living with people like yourself who have issues just think about it that somehow, some way, by the close of the day, you have broken at, one, at least one of the laws because you somebody will probably upset you, somebody will do something, somebody, I mean, there, there will be a situation one way or the other because human beings are not 100% complete. So somebody, somebody will do something for you to be upset or for you to just forget about the completeness of the law and the bible says scripture says that if you broke one of the law you are broken all of it so just imagine how and who could obey that law and so here we see that it's that blessings that the blessings you'll be blessed if you obey and you you are cursed if you disobey you are cursed if you disobey you are cursed now, if curses, I mean, if you disobey and you are cursed, just, just how many curses do you think you will have on you? And how many blessings do you have on, would you have on you? So in that old law, it's about what you did for God to do what he has to do. 
The difference is in this new dispensation, okay, it's not about what you have to do to get approval of God. It's about your be acceptance and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Who actually went for you? For what you could not do? Are you listening? And so this is the important thing that I want you to understand. Now, if you look at um, um, Galatians chapter 3, go with me to Galatians chapter 3. I want to show you something here. Galatians, the third chapter. The, chapter, the third chapter, look at verse 13, okay? As my father, let's read it from verse 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. So we're going to look at something, you know, on, on, on the other side of the coin. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. Did you see that? We just saw that, okay, in, uh, in Deuteronomy, okay? For he says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Curse. And so beloved, if you broke just one law, you are broken all. Or even if you think you haven't, you didn't break all, curse you come under a curse are you listening if you don't break even even all of it and you just broke one you are under a curse you come under a curse so therefore therefore there's no way you could break one and go scot free so you have to depend Okay, you have to, and, and the interesting thing is, you have to even depend on the, um, on the priest to um, atone for you once a year. Once a year. So in this, so let's, let's continue to read. I want to show you something here. Verse 10 again. For as many as are of the, of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But no one is justified by the law. Beloved, no one is justified. No one. No one is justified by the law in the sight of God. It's evident. Because if for, for, one, for one law that you break, you broke in all, then who is justified in the sight of God? Who can be justified in the sight of God? Are you listening? Verse 11. But that no one is justified by the, by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Because you cannot be justified or you cannot receive your justification, only the faith, only the faith can be justified. And like I said earlier, in the old law, they were not living or activating their faith in, in the law. It's, it was about what? It, it was about performance. Are you listening? It was about performance. It was about how, how you perform to get what you have to get. Are you listening? Now, and so that's what it means. Verse 12. Yes, watch this now, verse 12. Yet the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. Now, this is, this is the area I want you to pay attention to. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us jesus became a curse for us he says i didn't come to to do away with that old law no i came to fulfill it why because you couldn't fulfill it no i mean what, what more do you 
want God to do? What more? So, it, if you understand this, beloved, if you understand this, then you have to really see Jesus in a way you, re, you really haven't seen him before. You have to now understand what Jesus came to do for you. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Are you listening? Watch this now. Yet the law is not of it, but the man who does them shall live by them. For Christ, verse 13, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. As we saw Jesus was. And and those and those and those um um um, um uh, two thieves who were on, on, on each side of him who were also hanged on the cross. Okay? They were cursed. They won their curse. Because curse is anyone who hung on the tree. Watch this. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Now remember, you and I were, uh, were considered the Gentiles. We were not born into in the household of the Israelites. No. Are you listening? We were considered the Gentiles that the blessing of Abraham, who the promise was issued through him, that might that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Of the Spirit through faith. Let me just take one step back here and uh, and point something out to you. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, it is written, it cannot be annulled. It is written, it cannot be changed. See, this is why Jesus, Jesus told Satan, it is written. It is written. What is written is written. And it is written in the in the in the law that cares is everyone who hangs on the tree. See, that is why, that is why one of the thieves on the cross with Jesus caught the revelation to realize that this finished work of Jesus for him for that three years that he ended up on the cross for nothing that he did wrong but to save mankind. So his 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 punishment, his curse, is the curse that was on you and me that he took upon himself to nail it on the cross. And so he was hanging on the cross and that, that curse which was on you and me as a result of the fact that we could not keep the law, we could not obey the law because curse is anyone who could not obey the law. When you and I couldn't do it. And so he came to fulfill that. Oh my goodness. He came to fulfill it by taking that upon himself in your place. And the thief saw that he says, he says, that's why he says, he says, Lord, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. When you and Jesus said to him, Today. Today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise. Jesus was going to paradise. Are you listening to me? In paradise. He says you'll be with me in paradise. So, so I want you to understand that you are no longer under a curse. Now when you receive as the, as the thief who was hanging on the tree with Jesus... When he, re he, he received that finished work of Jesus, because Jesus had to, I mean, his, his ministry lasted for three years. And that thief heard of Jesus. And that thief heard of all that Jesus was doing. And then he found himself hanging on the side of Jesus on the same tree on the cross. And he, 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 I believe he wondered, but just, Jesus hasn't done anything. At least I am a thief. There is no accusation that Jesus stole from anybody. 
There's no accusation that Jesus murdered anybody. There's no accusation. I mean, every act, the, the only accusation that they were putting on Jesus is that he says, he claimed that he's, he's, he's God. He's a son of God. And that he can he can destroy the temple and build it in three in three days, which they didn't have a divine understanding of what he was saying, and they used that to accuse him, not to accuse him because he did what the thief who was who was hanging on the tree with him did, and so he saw himself, and the other one was saying was saying that Jesus, you said you are. You are you you can save your you can save everybody. Why don't you save yourself and save us? And the other one says, Shut up. At least we know what we have done. We know what we have done. But this man hasn't done anything. This man has not done anything. What he did was to save you and me from what we could not do. We could not obey that old law and the commandment. And even today, nobody can still obey it. Nobody. Nobody. That was his crime. But he did it for you. He did it. And right now, all you have to do is to just accept it. By activating your faith. And you just can't accept. You have to, because... You can't see Jesus as he was physically hanging on the tree. So you have to activate your faith. Beloved, the most powerful tool God has ever given man is his faith in him. I'm telling you, I am telling you, you have to have faith to believe that he died for you. Are you listening? He died for you. You have to have faith to believe it. Hey, Bishop Robinson, my, 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 I know you'll be resurrected with Jesus. <laughs> I salute you, man of God. Let me hear from you, all right? Listen, Jesus, see, the finished work of Jesus, that guy understood it. He understood it. He understood the finished work. Because that was the end of it. I mean, to be hanged on the tree or the cross, that was that was your end. That was the end. But beloved, do you believe? Do you believe? This is what brings you to this dispensation of grace. So that you will have a divine understanding and begin to enjoy it. Because there are some deep benefits in here that the only hope, the only person that can reveal it to you is the Holy Spirit. Who is now with us after Jesus has, has, has left. And that's why Jesus says it's, it's expedient, important, urgent that he leaves so that the Holy Spirit will come. He's a comforter. He's our paraclete. He's our advocate. He's our master. He's our teacher. He is our friend. Who, I mean, if you see, you cannot enjoy, you cannot enjoy the benefit of this grace dispensation if you don't understand the finished work of Jesus Christ. For you to un accept it. It will not, I mean, you will not. I'm telling you, because most of the time. We are doing the work of the Holy Spirit because we lack understanding. Ignorance is it's 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 just too costly. Ignorance is just too costly. Ah, listen, do you know that what you are struggling to do, if you have that this understanding, that the Holy Spirit is here now to help you to, to achieve those things and allow the Holy Spirit to do because you have that understanding. Do you realize that you won't, you will not, I mean, you won't worry yourself too much? You know, my, that, that old religious 
you know attitude almost almost came upon me last night it's like oh man i have to i have to just you know pray in this for for this hour you know this period of time before i go to sleep and i caught myself i said what huh what what, what i gotta do all that go to sleep boy i tell you i mean my wife was playing was praying praise god i mean we take turns because when she's she's sleeping i get up to pray <laughs> But I mean, I, I saw my, I mean, I saw myself in, in like Muhammad Ali who say in the la la land, I was gone. Because all I did was Holy Spirit, I commit myself in Your hands. That was it. That was it. We are, we are, we are, we are doing the work of the Holy Spirit because we don't understand the dispensation that we are living in for real we don't we are just talking about grace and you know and and and, and some of i mean there's grace conventions and grace conferences all over you go you enjoy but you come back and you still going through you know living us in the old dispensation of the law because we lack understanding in all that getting, get understanding when I tell you that. You got to get understanding, beloved. And so in the old law, it's about what you, we, we supposed to do for God to do what he has to do. In this new dispensation, it's about what Jesus has done for you. And all you and I have to do is to accept and receive it. All right? You see this again. Curse is everyone, verse 13, who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise, the promise, the promise of the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit. Which Spirit? The Holy Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Beloved, we are, we are, we we are we are we are denying ourselves. Oh my goodness! Do you see how how much we are denying ourselves for not activating our faith in the Holy Spirit? Because so the Holy Spirit is is, is here doing this. Because well they 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 not they not believing in me. They don't even recognize that I'm here. They don't even recognize that I'm here. Therefore, I mean, it's it's like you 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 are home and not recognizing that uh, there's anybody there with you. How can you even get the service of that individual who is in the house with you? You don't even recognize that person. That's that's what it is with the Holy Spirit. He's such a gentleman. He don't force himself on nobody. He's not a rapist. Victoria, Vic, God bless you. The Holy Spirit is not a rapist. He doesn't force himself on, on nobody. But you, so you have to recognize that he is. And so this, this segment is bringing you to the place to revolutionize your thinking about the fact that, beloved, it's no longer what you do for God to be pleased. It's no longer that. It's no longer your your works, your hard effort that justifies you in the sight of God. No. Are you listening? You are not. Look at verse 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 eleven of uh, if you are just joining us, we are in Galatians chapter three. Look at verse verse eleven. But no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. You can't, you are not justified by the law. Beloved, if you want to live your life under that old law, old dispensation, there's no way you can be justified in the sight of God. Do you want, do you know what justifies you now? Do you know what justifies you now? 
Go with me to the book of Hebrews. Let me show you what justifies you in the sight of God. Go with me. Let me show you that. And then we'll come back to where we are. I'll show you, I'll show you that. So you are, yes, I know somebody just asked me that question. So what justifies me in the sight of God? Let me show it to you. Let me prove it to you. Hebrews, go with me to Hebrews. All right. I didn't say she, did I say Hebrews? No, I said Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. All right. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe, must believe, must not doubt, must believe. He who comes to God must believe, must believe, must believe. The word here, beloved, is believe, must believe that he God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must believe. And so you asking me what, who, who then is justified before God or what should you do? I just, I just showed you that. You must activate your faith. Beloved, God is not pleased necessarily about, about the church you go to. And, uh, and how hard you, 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 you even work in the church and, and want everybody to know that you are the, the hardest worker and, and all those things. Beloved, I'm telling you, it's not. But the important thing here I want to bring your attention to is that don't live the old life you could not live. Whereas you, what you do gets God to do what he has to do. If you obey, you are blessed. If you disobey, you are cursed. No more in that, that dispensation. Are you listening to me? Now, go with me. Let me show you something in the uh, in Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter, um, Hebrews chapter um, chapter eight. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter eight. Hebrews chapter eight. I want to show you something here. Stay with me. Hebrews chapter eight. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter eight. I'm telling you. See, I'm telling you. Look. When you when you come to understanding of of the person of the Holy Spirit, trust me, beloved, it's deep. It is 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 really deep. You, you know, I I have come to the place of ease and enjoying my spiritual liberty in the Holy Spirit. I've come to that place of ease. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, no worry. I am not, I am not concerned. I'm, I'm not afraid of what is not because I know that <laughs> the promises are mine. <laughs> the promises are mine. By the time he controls it. And so don't worry yourself about the time. Well, um, you know, the time is getting close. And at the time, listen, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. Trust me when I tell you this. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Whew, it's exciting. Romans chapter 8. All right, look at Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, faultless that there was no fault with it so beloved we are talking about the old dispensation that it it it, it, it couldn't work for us no it did not work for them that was even written for much more you i mean right now right now just take only the 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what i call the doubt the the uh, uh, 
do not, the do not, okay, those do not, do not commandment, only 10. And you see if you can obey them in a year, in a year, in a month. No, 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 in a week. No, 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 in a day. <laughs> no, on that, no, 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 you know what? Bring it down in an hour. Please, you can't. So there was something with it that man could not. And that's why Jesus says, I didn't come to do away with it because it is it is an agreement. And you, you can't, it is something that it cannot be changed. It cannot be annulled. So I didn't come to destroy it. I came to fulfill it for you because you are handicapped. Man, you are handicapped. You cannot do it. And if you are not able to do it, curse. Curse. So, you know, all these teachings that we, you know, we, we used to get, I, and, and I don't, I'm talking about myself. You know, there's, there's this bloodline curse. You had so much of bloodline curse that now I wonder where was those was that, that message of bloodline blessings where is it where is it it's so much of bloodline curse bloodline if nothing is good is going it is it, because of, of of where you were born and all that oh my goodness bloodline curse where is the blood bloodline blessing Bishop Dallas, my good friend, where, but today I'm blessed. I'm having the, uh, the, the Ruach bishops coming online. God bless all of you. Where is the bloodline blessing? Where is it? The bloodline curse, bloodline curse, bloodline curse, bloodline curse. Where is the blind, blood, 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 Blessing. Where is it? Is there anything like that? Oh, Jesus. I thank you so much. Watch this now. So there was something. There was a reason. And there was something about that. Um, um, that old dispensation. That old law. Look at verse 7. For if that first covenant had no fault or it was faultless, then no place would have been shot for a second one. Then in other words, there's no reason, there's no reason why we have, God has to give us a, 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 a second covenant. If there was no problem with it, then what is a, why, what is a, why is a, I mean, where is, what way and why did God have to give us a second covenant? Which is the dispensation we are living in, the covenant of grace. Why? Why? What's verse 8? Because finding fault with them, he says, he God says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Finding fault with it, he says, Behold, the time and the days are coming says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This, 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 this area here is why I say that you and me, the Gentiles, the covenant was not even for us. That old law was not even for you and I. This is why I even, even, even said that to you. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Where were you there? Huh? Where you there? <laughs> because they did not continue in my covenant. And I dis disregarded them, says the Lord. They did not continue in my covenant. Why couldn't they continue? Why didn't they continue in the covenant? Because, beloved, they could not obey the covenant. 
They could not obey the covenant. They could not obey. They couldn't. They could not function. They are part of the of the of the baggage. That part of the deal. They couldn't function it. They could not. They couldn't do it. Verse ten. For this is the covenant that I will make. The new one he's talking about. I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Says the Lord. Says who? The Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their heart. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother. Saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Listen to this carefully. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Are you getting this? Are you, beloved, I, I, I wish there's an injection that I can just just see, see you and inject that into your into into your body i'm telling you i mean this is this is this is this is interesting this is amazing this is wonderful this is sweet are you listening and so if you want to even put yourself in that old law beloved like somebody says why do you want to take somebody's fight to be your own why do you want to take somebody's fight to be your own or to be yours? That was not even your fight. Look into your own fight, which is the dispensation of, 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 of the noun as a result of the finished work of Jesus Christ. How much of this grace benefit are you enjoying? How much do you really understand the fullness of this grace? Do you? Do you? Do you? I bet you don't. And so again, and, and beloved, let me tell you something. See, it's very important, like I said earlier, because of this, because of this, this is why I said earlier, and I'm going to prove it to you, that the law of the old and the grace of now cannot coexist. Go with me now for the sake of time. Let me show you something. Let me show it to you. Go, go, go back to Galatians. Go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter chapter 4. Let me show you something in Galatians chapter 4. All right, my time is going. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Look at verse 21. Tell me, tell me. You who desire to be under the law. Oh, uh-huh. You see that question? Some of you who still desire to be under the law that you, can, you cannot even obey. And since you are not able to obey, curse is what comes upon you, according to the word of God. Okay? So now tell me, verse 21. Tell me who desire to be under the, under the law do you not hear the law? Do you not hear what the law says? That the law says, if you obey, blessings will be upon you. If you disobey, curse will be upon you. So you you are living a life of both blessing and cursing. I mean, you have blessing and cursing on you at the same time. Beloved, they cannot coexist. If you are blessed, you are blessed. If you are cursed, you are cursed. And so all you, you were hearing is bloodline curse. Bloodline curse. Well, beloved, let me bring you into a blind bloodline blessing. Are you listening? Watch this. Ah, tell me, verse 21. You who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. It is written. We know that. 
that one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh, according to the works. And, of, and he of the free woman through the promise. Through the promise. Verse 24. Which things are symbolic? For these are the two covenants. Get the revelation here. These are the two covenants. Madhu, God bless you. These are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. 25. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabic, or Arabia, sorry, in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Now, that, that, that is another, another subject I will treat on that another time of this dispensation and this group of people. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you who do not travail, for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, I'm bringing it home. Watch this now. Now we, are you part of the we? If you are part of the we, listen. <laughs> now we, brethren, are you part of the brethren? Listen. As, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Hey, Nat, God bless you. As Isaac was, Isaac was the son or a child of the promise. Isaac was a child of promise. Because remember, the promise was given to Abraham that Abraham, I will give you a son. Oh, when it's getting sweet, that's when the time is getting closer. But don't worry. We will hit back on this. Isaac was the son of promise. And he says, brethren, as Isaac was, Galatians chapter 4, we were reading from verse 21. Now in verse 28. Now brethren, now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. Even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the born woman and her son. For the son of the born woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free hallelujah and so let me just repeat myself the law and this dispensation of grace that dispensation of the law and this dispensation of the grace cannot coexist did i prove it myself to you they can't coexist so don't believe in your life believe in this curse the only way now let me end with this the only way you will be living a life with a mentality and mindset because of what somebody have told you and have drilled into your mind for you to believe that you are under a curse is because you have not come to realize that Jesus became that curse for you. And he was killed, buried, and resurrected without a curse so your curse is buried you are not under a curse 
If you have anything to worry yourself or to ask yourself, ask yourself this question. Have I believed the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross? Have I believed it? Have I come to believe it, to accept it, and believe it that Jesus died for me? That is what you should worry yourself about it. And not to be going around that you are under a curse and a bloodline curse and bloodline curse. Man, I tell you, I wish I got this this message early early part of my life. But it's not it's not late. It's not late, and it's not late for you, beloved. You are not under a curse unless you have not. Oh boy, boy, boy! You are not under a curse because you see. When you receive Jesus, Jesus comes to live in you. And the law and grace cannot coexist. The old law for which if you don't obey, curse come upon you. And this dispensation of grace for which you, when you activate your faith in, in believing the finished work of Jesus Christ, you come into that blessing family. They cannot coexist. And so, if Jesus lives in you, what kind of curse, what kind of curse are you talking about? Or is it because of what you are going through right now? Beloved, life has full of things. And, some, and sometimes, what somebody will do you know, the wind of that, if it's negative or positive, the wind of that blows blows in your path because you are part of the human race. That does not mean you are under a curse. And so if you believe what you've been told, that you are under a curse, all you are going to see is everything you do and everything that is not going right, it, it means that you are under a curse. And what kind of sad life is that? What kind of pathetic life is that that you are under a curse because of what you are going through? What kind of sad? That's so pathetic. It's so sad. So sad. I mean, it's, 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 I don't know if there's another word for being, I mean, for sadness. That is, to see yourself that, well, because things are not going, you know, the way you expect it to go. Beloved, if you even receive that promise, which is yours, all right, I want you to remind you that the time, the timing of that promise to come to pass for you to see the complete is in the hands of God. Are you listening to me? Bible says that he controls the time and the season. You don't control the time and the season. See, when you come to the, the, this level, this place of understanding, are you listening? Proverbs says that, he says that wisdom, wisdom will strengthen you, but understanding will keep you. Understanding will keep you. Because of understanding, eh? you will not, see, when you have understanding, you will not worry about who, who you see as making it and be, and and, and and you are not in that place and, and you decide you convert. See, even with that, even with that, you, you convert that idea. I wish. Beloved, walk with the Holy Spirit. Let him teach you. Because you are unique in your own. Do you do you know that you are the only person in this world, only one, who has this fingerprint of yours? You are the only person. God made you unique. You are not anybody and don't try to be anybody and don't try to be in the image of another person. I mean, unless you haven't come to understand, but this is why I'm here to let you know that God has made you unique. Be your, you, you see this Facebook thing here that I, I'm even on right now with all this live on Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, <clears throat> And, uh, and 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 all that YouTube and all that live. You see, I am not in competition with nobody. I, I was sharing this with with with, uh, with Joyce. I said sometimes you you finish the broadcast and then you see uh, hundred views or or two views or one view. 
Do you think it bothers me? It don't bother me one second. When I finish with what I'm doing right now, uh, ask my wife, she'll tell you. I go and enjoy her, enjoy my life, whatever it may be. Even if it's a cup, uh, just a glass of water, I have to just put some honey in it to just have an enjoyable, watch my TV or study my, my then do my business, whatever. That's what I do. I don't worry myself about how many thousands of people watch them not. Listen, Jesus, Jesus, he came to do what he has to do. But as many that, that as many as believe to them, to them, we're given the right to become sons of God. It don't matter with me. I'm not in competition with nobody. I am me, Patrick Wainu, me. Deception with this eye mentality or trying to be like somebody uh, or somebody. Don't even try to be like me. Be who you are. God made you very special. God made you very special. You are, there's nobody on the face of this earth but you. Sometimes like Joyce was saying, sometimes you hear, oh, boy, you look like somebody. Well, that person is not you. You are you by yourself. Are you listening? Find this and begin to enjoy your life. Other than trying to be somebody. I, I refuse to be anybody. I am me. And if you don't like me, that's your business. Are you listening? But be who God has made you to be. And if you don't know, let me let me show you how you come to know. First of all, accept Jesus. The fact that he took your curse upon himself and nailed it to the cross. He has departed this earth and has sent the Holy Spirit the comforter, the teacher. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. All, not some. Are you listening? And so you and I have to get closer to the Holy Spirit for him to teach us. According to Corinthians, the Bible says that only the Holy Spirit knows the, the things of God, even the deep things of God. Even the deep things of God. And so when you, you know, so we're discussing something about, I had, uh, you know, some prophet, somebody says it's a prophet and he tells you, uh, oh, he even knows the underwear, the color of your underwear and all that. That's a familiar spirit dying from the Holy Spirit. That's a familiar spirit operating. That is not from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is I'm going to be talking about, I know that the, the undershirt, the color of your undershirt or your underwear and your underbra and all those nonsense you'll be hearing these days. Like, my goodness. But there's time for them. There's time for everything. Walk with the Holy Spirit. Invite Him. Like I said, He's not a rapist. He ain't going to force Himself on you. If you don't invite the Holy Spirit, He's not. Invite the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you things that He don't. Why? Because the Scripture even tells us that. That He knows the things of of God even the deep let me prove it to you because I, I want you to see it's not about what I am saying I want you to see it yourself all right go with me to to um, Corinthians first Corinthians let me show it to you thank you Jesus <clears throat> thank you Holy Spirit go with me to first Corinthians chapter 2 look at first Corinthians chapter 2 look at it <clears throat> hallelujah Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at verse 10, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me for the sake of time. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through them to us. to God has revealed them to us through his spirit. His spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. Okay, watch this. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Except the spirit of God. Alright, verse 12. Now we have received, this is where it is. We have received, not the spirit of, the, of this world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know 
the things that have been freely given to us by God. Why don't you want to walk with the Holy Spirit to teach you things? Why don't you want to walk with the Holy Spirit for Him to tell you the right moves to make? Why don't you want to walk with the Holy Spirit so that He can lead you into all truth? Beloved, this is a question that I'm leaving with you for you to ponder on it. So again, let me recap the message of the day. It is not about, first of all, the law of the old, the old covenant, the old testament, if you want to call it that. And this new law, this new covenant, this better covenant or this, this new dispensation, they cannot coexist. That's number one. So don't leave that old Lord with that same or that mentality of the old in this new. There will be you be you be there will be a struggle in your life. There will be a struggle in your life. Come to understand that the old has been dealt with by Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Come to understand that. And then begin to enjoy this new. Okay, this new wine by activating your faith. Show God your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Show Him your faith that you believe in the finished work of His Son Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And He sent in the Holy Spirit who is with us now that he may teach us we just read that and lead us into all truth reveal the things that that the mind of god to us that we may which is freely given god has freely given us. that is what we call the grace that's what we call the grace all right so you know like this this i think a couple of days I, I said this grace did not save you you were not saved by grace you were you 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 were purchased by the blood of Jesus, and we we've spoken about the blood and how in that old covenant, the priests have to take blood, go into the sanctuary once a year to to you know to perform sacrifices for the for for the sins of of of, of the people and all that. Are you listening? We is listen. If you miss any of this, go to my YouTube, Patrick Quino, Patrick Quino, I believe. To go to the YouTube, let me let me get that information here. I'm going to read this today, and I haven't read that for a long time, so that you get all this information correctly. All right. Um, to my website, number one, to my website, www.patrickwenuministries.com. Okay. The Facebook is Patrick E. Quenu or Patrick Quenu Ministries. Twitter account is at PQ Ministries 1. PQ Ministries 1. Periscope is the same at PQ Ministries 1. YouTube is Patrick Quenu Ministries. All right. And you can also send me an email, which is icfm, icfm29 at gmail.com. So if you miss any of these messages, please get, get it in YouTube. It will help you. So that you can follow in total of what we've been talking about. Are you listening? And so again, the law and the, the old law and this new dispensation of grace, they cannot coexist. Why? Because they can't go, they just can't coexist. If not, go and uh, refresh what we just read in Galatians chapter 4, all right, verse verse 21. Um to 31 okay read that and um, you you have an understanding here okay in the old dispensation again it's about do 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 what you do what you do what you do what you do for god to do what he has to do but in this new dispensation it's about done 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 because jesus has done has done has done it and all you have to do is to show god your faith in believing 
in the finished work of Jesus Christ and uh, begin to enjoy your liberty, your spiritual and physical liberty through the Holy Spirit. And beloved, you will, you will begin to enjoy God even more with understanding. Are you listening? Well, this is where I draw the line. This is where I draw the curtains. Same time, watch me, maybe this weekend I'll, I will try to come back on it. We'll see. All right. Turn on your Facebook notification buttons. So this way, um, when I come, you'll get a, no, a notice, a uh, notification that I, you know, I'm on live and bring you more, more of God's word, more of the true word of God. All right, break it down for you to understand. Beloved, you are living in the dispensation that when you, you really, you truly understand it, you will stop worrying. You will stop worrying. You are worrying because you are afraid. And fear comes from unbelief. If you don't believe this scripture, and if you don't believe what God has put in place, and if you don't believe what the Holy Spirit is teaching you, if you don't believe it, fear, fear will come into your life. And you begin to be afraid and fear when fear comes into your life your environment is nothing but it, it attracts demons it's attracting demons negative things but they shouldn't have no place in your environment are you listening I want you to 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 know that you don't have no trouble now somebody asked me this um, pastor do you do you do you um, accept um, you know offering and or, or tight but listen let me let me answer with this question now I believe that your tight should go to your church if you have a church if you have a home church your tight should go there now if you don't have a home church and you want to send your tight to this ministry that would be fine because you are this is this is where you are receiving your meal but I believe your tight should go to your home church all right now um offering yes we do receive offering and um you can send an offering for the upkeep of this ministry uh because we have other other stationary things we do administrative things that we do yes we'll take your offering you can send if you have a paypal you can go to um uh, my website you will see a you know the website there www.patrickwinoministries.com you will see there's a um a paypal um you know set there where you can you can just you know uh, do that transaction there all right or if you want to also send um you know through um other means um you can send send an email and they will let you know what other other um, uh, me, uh, means we have maybe through a cash app or something if you want to do it through a cash app you can use this number to do that 914 five seven two nine eight one six all right so to answer this uh, brother's question do we receive um, tithes and offering yes we do and I've explained why yes we do and so but our, our first will want to clarify this that your tithes must go to your home church if you do have one if you don't yes you can send it to this ministry all right this is a very good ministry i mean i you know that this has been a blessing to you bring, bringing you the word and bringing you to, to the place where you have a self awareness of where who you are in god and where you are to enjoy your liberty in this dispensation of grace through by activating your faith by activating your faith Without faith, it's impossible, beloved, to please God. And if God is not pleased, just ask, if God is not pleased, and if God is pleased with you, why? who do you care about? Who do you care about? And so, yes, we do receive that. Um, again, just turn on your notification button on your Facebook, all right, or your Twitter and all that. So that when I come on there, I'm, I believe this weekend I might come. But to bring you more of God's word, to bring you to the place of of, of just um, 
you know, um, diluting that religious teachings that, uh, you know, have been injected into you, for which you are living a life of, uh, of confusion, okay? Because I'm telling you, when you when you re, you come to that place of freedom, oh man, it's it's exciting, it's exciting. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Enjoy the weekend. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God, and in all thy getting, get understanding.